Hey, what's up everybody? Russ with rwgresearch.com. Go check it out. Uh, today I'm actually showing you the uh, what I call the six pulser. Uh, it's basically an Arduino board uh, with six outputs, uh, variable frequency, variable duty cycle, different pulse types, uh, different trains. There's six outputs on this and a um, guy by the name of William is programming the Arduino and I asked basically for duty cycle and frequency adjustment and uh, basically he came out with so much stuff down there I don't even understand half of them still learning the programming because it's a versatile thing it's for anything and everything I'm going to be using it for the EPG system uh, to pulse my uh, initial primary coils but it can be used for anything coils um, HHO cells um, anything you want to use for pulse firing or different sequencing or just anything you can imagine now what I've done is taken the Arduino board and hooked it up to an external um, opto isolators to power a inverter chip to uh, my MOSFETs, power MOSFETs, and this way I can run a bunch of current through this at whatever pulse trains I'd like to. Now the MOSFETs that I'm using are exactly what you'd want. You may want something that would go to a higher frequency, but the ones I have will carry a bunch of amps and that's what I'm looking for. So here it is. My shop is a little bit messy, you'll have to excuse that. But uh, at the end of this video I will show you a little bit more of underneath this thing. But basically here you have a ground connection, you have a um, connection to where your wire, your, your basically your coil is, and then on the other side you've got your power. So this is basically ground, theoretically, coming out of ground through your uh, MOSFET to a positive voltage. Okay, and... Um, Basically, you've got the Arduino board, the LCD screen, and there's just a little prototyping board here so that I can easily move wires around if I'd like to try something different. Uh, you have two potentiometers here for varying the duty cycle and frequency uh, and for other things if you'd like. Um, right now, there's two push buttons. This is how you actually go through the menu on the LCD screen. So if I hold this button, I go into a menu and... Uh, Basically, I can go in here and let's say, you see the pulsing going on there. Let's say I want to go to different steps. I can change how many LEDs are being pulsed. You see that? So I'm down to one, two, three, four, five, or six, up to six outputs. Okay, so that's how you change, that's how you interface basically with this thing. Now I have a four line display here, but normally they work on two and you can use that just fine as well. Um, so you've got your outputs here and your inputs as far as voltage is concerned. Uh, each one of these actually controls the voltage um, coming into the system for a particular output. So if I wanted to just turn all these off, I can just turn on number two or I can turn on one and two and I don't have to actually play with the programming. I can just do that on the fly really fast. Um, or if I was trying to wire something up, just turn the power off and wire it up and then turn it back on without unhooking the entire system. Basically what I've got here is you've got to give this thing 12 volt because on the isolator board here there's a tw um, 5 volt regulator. You can probably put up to like 20 some volts into that. So you can you probably use 24 volts as well. Um, on the output side of this you can hook up anywhere from 0 to 75 volt for the MOSFET that I'm using. And um, you can carry quite a few amps. As a matter of fact I probably don't even have heavy enough gauge wire in this system to be able to handle the amount of amps allowed for the each MOSFET. Um, so that's pretty cool. So basically, um, the opto isolator board here and the driver board, this is a, uh, you can see it, try to focus it there. There you go, it's an SN7404N, it's just an inverter chip. Um, and here's the opto isolators. I'm using this particular isolator. Uh, let's see, it's a 4 in 38A, but you don't have to use that. You can just use something different. Um, you can also use a MOSFET driver instead. But this is just the circuit I came up with that works. On the back side here, you can see my MOSFETs in there. There's three on there, three on the bottom, and fans in a nice big old heat sink. Uh, you can see it there. Lots of air moving through that thing. Uh, I'm not really concerned at all about it getting warm. Okay, so there it is. That's what it looks like. That's what's going on. I'm going to hook it up 
and show you what's going on here in one second. First, I want to show you the schematic and the printed circuit board. So this is the schematic. Let's see if I can get a little closer for you. Basically, you've just got an input right here, and it comes in through a resistor to the opto isolator LED to ground. Now, this part of the opto isolators are isolated from the rest of this schematic, and that's so that you do not get back feed to your Arduino. So this whole this whole system's isolated. The Arduino's isolated from the outputs. That's definitely what you want to do. Um, and then you've got the other side of the opto isolator running a inverter and a pull down resistor and then you see this line here there's this box this is what's on the printed circuit board and then everything else here is wired externally and I've got each MOSFET on you know its own board hooked to a heat sink so these are just basically jumper wires here to wherever you want to run your system now I have a diode in here and I actually have an extra terminal right here that I'll be running a diode across these two terminals and the reason I did that is so if I wanted to disconnect the diode and connect it to like a back EMF charger of some sort uh, to extract the back spikes and make the system efficient or just play around with that I can do that without actually going in and messing with the circuit it's literally just the only thing that's in there is literally the MOSFET I have to protect it externally uh, and I did that for that reason so I could make this box very versatile do whatever I'd like with it then I have here, I have all the power connected to one side of these switches, okay, and I've got terminals for the individual connectors here where you can put in different type of voltages. So if you want 10 volts here, 12 volts here, and 20 volts here, you can do that. If you're just running 12 volts through the whole system, you just hook it up here, flip your switches on. You see what I mean? So uh, the other terminals, the output, so literally you're coming from ground through the MOSFET, out here to the terminal block then your coil or your um, load goes here whatever you're running and then either goes to positive here or goes to positive here and you got another ground connection for your uh, your other part and here there's a uh, 555 I'm sorry a uh, 5 volt regulator just connected to power and that's also on the printed circuit board but isolated from the Arduino I'm not using either power for either one's all isolated and I want no feedback problems and here's the printed circuit board uh, I have all this stuff posted over at the forums and there you go that's the circuit board and there it is there the green connectors here are jumper wires over the top side of the printed circuit board I don't think I can really get a good shot of behind it probably not but there it is looks kinda crazy but anyway, I'll give you a little demo before time gets too long here. Seems like I talk too much on these things. What do you guys think? All right, so I've got this hooked up, ready to go. Right now, my external loads are just LEDs, and it's merely just to show you how it's working. All right, so I've got it hooked up. I've got all my switches off. You can see it's pulsing. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this on. All right. You can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's how it is. All right. And if you can watch both sets of LEDs, you can see them running together. The pulse train there. All right. So I can change the type of pulse train. So we're going to the program. Let's change the pulse train to either all flashing. Okay, or sequencing one way, or sequencing the other way, or doing this weird step thing that's programmed. Um, and basically, you can do anything you'd like. Um, you can make up your own patterns. Um, William is the guy who's building the program, and uh, I can ask him to do whatever we need and have as many modes as we'd like. But uh, basically, the sequencing one is the most important and the uh, the flashing one there's a few others that I'm gonna have to play with here well, let's go ahead and set up uh, let's just set up that one alright and then on the on the program here I can type in the frequency uh, let's just go with a random frequency and it will change now this is downloading through the serial port which is connected to these jumper wires right here you can externally trigger this with a signal generator or a hall sensor or a pickup coil. 
Um, that's part of the options with this whole programmable box. You can actually run feedback loops with this system. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter here. Hit send. Okay, now it's going really fast. Might not be able to see it's going so fast. But, uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and change the pulse mode again. Since it's going so fast, and I'll show you the other option that's on here right now. Basically, it's flashing like I think four times and then moving to the next LED. But yeah, you got the frequency on here and a few other options, and it tells you what's pulsing at what times and the output numbers. And I mean, there's, this is a really cool setup, um, and it's going to be very helpful. The coil I'm going to be running, which some of you have seen, is this one right here. That's a little monster. And I'll also be doing air cores. This has five on there, but I can put less or more. That's for the EPG. All right, now let me get you a quick little underside of this box. So go ahead and unplug it. Take the power off here. Alright, just unplug the whole thing. Okay. Sorry about the bad camera work. I haven't got my little key switch hooked up just yet, but I will. That's just for fun. But, uh, yeah. There you go. MOSFETs on the bottom. Fans on the back. Got my opto isolator circuit there. You can kind of see what the back looks like. It looks pretty chaotic. I just use wires and soldered them on there. But I did that on a regular one. I was going to etch the board, but I didn't because I wanted it to be easily replicatable. And I uh, just got stainless steel screws for the front here, which is kind of expensive, actually. But uh, I got tape stuck to my foot. All right, yeah, I feel better. But anyway, there you go. Just a quick little update. I wanted to show you what, what was going on with this and what I, what I was doing. And, uh, and this is it. This is basically portable. you got to give it 5 volts for the Arduino and uh, 12 volts for the circuitry I have and then whatever voltage you like to run this thing I probably will enclose this but um, I'm not quite done with it so there you go I can put some amps through some coils um, I'm gonna give you a quick little show off here of a very cool coil that Tom Barnett I believe I pronounced that right created yeah, look at this thing. I've been waiting to energize this. I've had it. He sent it all the way from the UK. Jack had it. Uh, got to play with it. Now I get to play with it. That's copper clad. Wrapped on a Abha Rodin coil. Those of you who don't know what this is, check out my later work. Earlier work, I should say. Basically, I need six, these six channels to be pulsing this puppy at some high amperage. We're going to see what happens. So That will be upcoming as well. All right, well, I believe I've talked your head off enough. This is Russ with rwgresearch.com. Uh, you can donate towards this research and uh, help things move faster and be able to get uh, better things going on here if you'd like. Uh, if you can't donate any sort of funds, that's fine. Come over to the forums at open-energy-source-energy.org. Oh wait, open uh, but it's connected to rwgresearch.com. Most of them I just give that one. So go check it out. Um, the schematics I will be drawing of the Arduino section of this. Right now I just have my uh, add-ons. But the Arduino section I will draw that up. Everything's posted over at the forums. You can get the code. You can get the schematics. You can build this for yourself. It really was not that hard. I had to design it. Uh, my aspect of this. So it's kind of a little bit more time consuming. But if you want to just replicate it get some chips, put them on a board, solder it up, you're good to go. You've got yourself a really pretty high quality um, pulse sequencer of anything you'd like to do. So pretty cool open source project and there'll be more, many more to come. As you can tell I'm probably sound pretty tired. I'm pretty tired. The next two weeks are going to be lots of things going on. Got the pulse box done, got the uh, split gas cell ready to go, the EPG primary is ready to go. The EPG is ready to go. Uh, I've got the gases. Uh, we're ready to rock out. So be sure to check out this channel, um, RWG42985. That's on YouTube. That's my channel if you're watching this somewhere else. 
be prepared to see some pretty cool stuff. Um, plasmatizing stuff, some interesting gas going on. There's just going to be a lot of very cool stuff. And uh, that's it. So I will see you soon. Enjoy. Peace, everyone. It's Russ. Signing out.